You never have to look far in Mississippi to find an award-winning chart-topping musician. And it really doesn't matter what the genre of music is. Today, we are shining the spotlight on one of the most prolific gospel performers in the world. Melvin Williams of Smithdale, Mississippi, has spent a lifetime writing, performing, and producing gospel music, either as a solo artist or with his brothers Leonard and Doug and the trio simply but famously known as the Williams Brothers. Melvin, thanks for being here today. Thank you for having me. I'm that so is, glad you're here. Yeah, and um, thank you. Thank I tell you. you, you bring an awful lot of hope to people with your music. And so it's incredible. You've had a, an incredible career. Your dad is what mm -hmm. set y'all up. Yeah, um, started in the 60s, man. We were kids and yeah. uh, and uh, we were just kind of looking at my older brothers, you know, singing, yeah. looking up and, you know, and and uh, he saw us one day on the front porch, had our broom and our sticks and we was just making up songs and sound, we must have sounded pretty good. So he yeah. called us inside and, and let my mom hear us. I think these kids might be able to sing a little bit. And that's how we got started, me and my uh, brother Leonard and my sister, really. Yeah. And uh, and from that, you know, was the Little Williams Brothers was created, and uh, my late brother Frank Williams mm -hmm. was with the Williams Brothers when they first started locally. Yeah. And uh, we did our first uh, professional album in 1973. 19 1973. Yes. Wow. Yeah. And back then, um, let's see. Jet, Jet Magazine, there was, had gospel in the magazine and we reached the top 10. I think I was like 17, 18. Wow. Oh man, I thought I was it, baby. No kidding. I thought I was it, baby. Yeah. I mean, ever 17 year olds want to have girls screaming yeah, at them I, when and, they're singing. Well, I guess that's the thing too, because we grew up looking at the Temptations and yeah. all those kind of groups and the, the Jacksons and Jackson 5 and, and we wanted that. and. The, after that, we wanted to be, you know, the temptations of gospel, yeah. you know, and move, do I let moves and stuff. So, it, it, you know, uh, it, was a, it was a great, great thing, man, because we would come back home, um, you know, from, from dates uh, on the weekend. We'd have four or five hundred dollars a piece in our pocket, you know. Which was a lot of money Big back then. money right big there. Money. And my dad was like, y'all took all that money to school? <laughs> no, don't ever do that again. Don't ever do that again. Yeah, and we would uh, borrow our brother's cars. They had all kind of shop cars back then because they were brick masons and they was land bricks. Yeah. And uh, we would go out on the weekends during the summer mm -hmm. and, and work with them. And we got licensed to drive, my brother, and we would just buy their cars. They had convertibles. We'd go to school in convertibles, have money in our pocket. And all the girls were like, wow. Never dreamt that um, we'd be doing this. 50 some years later, man, still doing it, man. Well, that's what's so amazing because I mean, I think about my sisters and I. I mean, we're really good in a in a crisis, uh, but usually my parents don't even let us sit together in church. Uh, you guys are working you said together. Crisis. Yeah, you guys are like work. You guys are working together day in day out, and you've been doing uh, it, and you still you still like each other. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Uh, I mean, we've had our faults, and okay. we, we get in the, you know the brother fights and stuff and uh, disagreements, but we can always come together yeah. to agree and. Uh, and we realized that um, in the later years, we all had our individual talents that, yeah. that we didn't really know that was a, a blessing from God. We just thought, well, hey, man, we just got something good. We, yeah. learned, it, we learned it from my brothers. Not, <laughs> you know. So, um, but um, realized that God had um, put a little of the gift of the genes in us, you yeah. know, in our bodies too. So, man, we... Uh, individually could write and arrange and I took a year of piano lessons in eighth grade started in the senior mm -hmm. choir singing in the senior choir I was singing alto in the fourth grade Wow! yes and uh, Central High School in Liberty Mississippi mm -hmm. what up Liberty <laughs> Abe <Abbey> County <laughs> ended up in Franklin County and finished high school mm -hmm. but you know I started music all through my all through my uh, teenage life, um, all the way through high school, two years of college. By the time I got to college at Southwest Junior College, mm -hmm. Mississippi Junior College in Summit, 
I was singing bass. Oh, wow. <laughs> Puberty and, uh, does amazing things. Oh, yeah. So I, I went through all the parts. So yeah. I, um, you know, and that gave me a chance to, to dibble and dip, as I said, dibble and dabble in folk music, Negro spirituals, mm -hmm. classical music, country western, country western, all of it. You know, we did a little of all of it, man. And uh, and so I didn't know that was going to come of value. Right. At, you know, at some point, because I thought when we got to Southwest, we were singing all these songs like, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm like, we don't need to, what am I going to do with that, you know? Exactly. And uh, and come to find out, man, is that even to this day, I, there was an artist that I'm looking at and uh, thinking about signing to the label, and that's the kind of music they do. Yeah. And they're a bunch of youngsters, too. Can't tell you too much right now, but I'm, but anyway. We're li I'm looking at them, and they, that's what they're singing, a cappella and, yeah. and, and that kind of music. I'm like, wow, this thing has become full circle, you know? You mentioned the label. I mean, I think that's something that y'all learned early on, that when you don't have control of your own music, it's a lot more difficult. And so y'all you you teamed together and started your own label, Blackberry, and that's something yeah. your dad wanted you to do. Yeah, yeah, my dad always wanted us to own our own label and our own records, because we had been to several different record labels and uh, we were writing and uh, really didn't have our publishing together. And, right. and then we realized like, wait a minute, you know, we're selling all these records and everybody is smiling and we smiling too, but uh, but they smiling to the bank, we smiling at home and going, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, so, so my dad said, wait a minute, y'all need to really think about getting, you know, okay. find somebody, um, uh, you know, uh, entertainment lawyer to right. help get your act together. And so we um, came to Jackson. My brother Leonard met with uh, with uh, one of I, I would say one of Mississippi's and one of the world's uh, renowned lawyers, uh, entertainment lawyers, Mike Francona. Oh, I know Mike. Yes. Yeah, and yeah, um, yes, so right. man, he uh, he uh, really, you know. Uh, taught us a lot as far as the music business right. is concerned. And it's been good. It's been a good ride, man. We still have Blackberry Records. Yeah. And uh, still part on of Blackberry Records. Uh, Grand Studios as well. Mm -hmm. And we've been having that for a while. And uh, and now I'm um, just branching out and starting my own record label. Oh, um, you really? Oh, really? Melvin What's... Williams Entertainment. So, Congratulations. Yeah, thank you, thank you. And you've got you. a new album coming out. The new album is on my label, the first album, uh, Where I Started mm -hmm. From, which brings a whole another conversation. Um, um, I wanted to, Blackberry Records started the label, it was the first black label to in Mississippi to have nat national distribution, yeah. and but we were dibbling, dabbling in all kind of music. We wanted to um, uh, open the doors for young mm -hmm. musicians and entertainers and singers that ne couldn't necessarily at the time get contracts with big labels. Right. And so we we were independent, so we were able to do that for a lot of the labels. I mean, a lot of the artists and. Um, and my labor, I just wanted to concentrate on um, just traditional gospel because the industry just kind of, in the last 15 years or more, shifted to, you know, more of contemporary praise and worship, which yeah. I love. I right. love all of it. And I sing, you know, I've, God bless me, I'm able to sing it all. Um, but I'm, um, I'm just... Um, advocate of preserving traditional gospel music because uh, it's it's a part of our roots, it's a part of the foundation, it's where, kind of where it all started from, you know, traditional gospel and the blues, and, you know, you think about the Delta and all that stuff. So when I, and I, I say, you know, I, I just need to, uh, I want to do this. And my manager was like, for five or six years, and I was just dibbling it out, and she said, well, if you want to do this, I, I found something uh, from U.S. Department, State Department, you know, Department of State, mm -hmm. and the Jazz at Lincoln Center, they they send these groups, groups of people all over the world, you know, uh, from the United States to for to, to to sing and share their music and share their culture and and interact with mm -hmm. other nations. Long story short, they mm -hmm. they selected us, 
and uh, we put the group together, the Melvin Williams group. And that's how we were able to go over there, you know, because I couldn't use the Williams brothers, because I couldn't use yeah. Melvin Williams because I had already recorded nationally. Right. It had to be something new. So we did that total acoustic, two guitars, one percussion, wow. and four vocals. Went to Av Azerbaijan, mm -hmm. Turkmenistan, Georgia, Moscow, you name it, and uh, for five weeks. What was the reception like? I mean, did the people up there oh, love it? Oh, my God. Yeah. We were like a rock group over there, man. Really? And, and believe it or not, uh, very talented uh, singers, musicians. Mm -hmm. We did workshops, went to colleges, auditorium, high schools, um, places that, uh, as a matter of fact, one of the places we went, they allowed us to go that Bono and U2 couldn't even go. They wouldn't really? even allow them to go. Well, how because, did you get in? Well, well, they looked at Bono as uh, sort of like a... Um, a rabble rouser. Well, <laughs> yeah, I guess yeah. you would say that, but yeah. he was like a more, you know... More like political. A, political. Yeah. And they didn't, they don't, uh, they wasn't, you know, very happy about that. Yeah, so but this is a region that didn't have any religion for forever. I mean, they, you know, with being part of the Soviet Union. Yeah, so that yeah, was yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, and they're very, it's a dictatorship country over yeah. there. And uh, as a matter of fact, we were, we did this song called uh, Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and it's one of the countries, one of the cities over there. You can't say Jesus. You can say God. Yeah. A uh, Lord or something like that, but not Jesus. So how'd you get around that then? And, I didn't. Okay. Actually, I we went on stage. They was like, "Hey, do not say Jesus. Say, Lord, keep me near the car, yeah. or something like that." You know. And I got right out there. I uh, know they say say. I say we all agreed to say, "Please, yeah. Lord, keep me near the cars." And I got out there, and the first thing I'm like, "Jesus, keep <laughs> me." And they were looking at me like. Oh my God! Could you see the face on these people? And, uh, so how was prison? <laughs> and, I, yeah, and I was looking at them. I'm like, "What are y'all looking at me for?" You know? I'm like, "Just that, don't say Jesus." <laughs> I'm like, "Oh my God!" But it was, it was, it was, it was an awesome, awesome experience, and that just validated me do, to do what I'm doing and come yeah. to this point where I am right now. You know, I mean, some people have. Early on, they described y'all's sound as you know R and B, but with uplifting lyrics. Yeah, I mean, and that that's one thing about your music. I mean, I've I'll be honest with you, I, I've known of y'all for forever, and I've been listening to it. Particularly, I've had some loss in my life, and mm -hmm. it really does lift it up. Yeah. you've had some loss in your life too. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you yeah. lost your dad tragically to yeah, a car accident. Yeah. Your mom, yeah, passed recently, passed. like three, two and a half, three years ago. Yeah, and, and then my daughter your passed daughter. Oh. Uh, <laughs> this year in February. Yeah, how do you? How do you? Like, does that lift you up? Actually, yes, yeah. man. It's 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 a daily journey, daily yeah. struggle. But to know that they would be proud, my mom and dad yeah. was really proud, oh, yeah. and uh, of what we were doing. My dad got to see a lot of it, but my mom got to see much, much more. Yeah, and. Uh, and my daughter, you know, she's she got to see a lot of it. Even though she passed at 35, she got to see me do it. You know, do a lot of things. As a matter of fact, went to a lot of the award shows with me, and yeah. uh, so I. So got, you got to spend that time together. Yeah, I got that oh, yeah. time, man. She was and, very talented in her own. Yeah, right. she could sing, and yeah. uh, I always wanted to sing, but I never thought she was just real serious. to a lot of years, and then. And then she got married and started a couple babies, so I said, okay. Oh, so you got yeah. some grandchildren. Yeah, I got four of them. Oh, that's four awesome. Four of them, yeah. Four grand, four grand bosses. <laughs> grand bosses. I like how you put that. It's very true, too. Yeah, man. So uh, they were a big inspiration. Frank, uh, matter of fact, uh, he taught me my first cars on my guitar. I used to take his guitar. Yeah when he was playing with the Jackson Southern Airs, mm -hmm. and I'd just take it and turn it upside down, and he'd show me cards, and that's how I learned my first cards on the guitar, through Frank. And um, from that, I just kind of stopped playing a little bit, you know? But the inspiration, they were such inspiration to me, and um, and and I, I think, um, you know, if they could see, you know, see yeah. us now, they would say, like, yeah, okay, yeah. You know, seven, now then, this is not a brag. Seven Grammy nominations later, and yeah. a whole bunch of stellar award winnings, and a whole different kind oh, of soul Yeah, yeah, and uh, man, I um, 
I just, I'm, I'm just grateful, man. I'm grateful. But, but what's so amazing about your career and about, you know, as the group and solo too, a lot of people, when they get to a certain point in their career, they're just singing their hits and they're not, you're growing as an artist. Yeah, I, I'm still, I'm, I still got a little spunk. I yeah. still, I still got that ad, admiration yeah. to, to write, sing, to travel, right. to move around, to do something different, to, uh, open doors for other artists. Yeah, uh, you're paying uh, it forward now. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so and I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for that because I've, you know, once I, I've had a chance to see, be a part of the old and the new generation. So right. a lot of artists don't have that. And so and I try to tell and instill that in the artists of today, yeah. you know, just be thankful and be grateful uh, for the for the ones that came before you because, right. man, come on, they're, they're the foundation. They're you are the shoulders that they're stand that you you know they yeah. are the shoulders that you're standing on. So, so be grateful, man. So and I, I think about all the people that came before me, like Mahalia Jackson, mm -hmm. the Soul Stairs, the Happy Goodman family, yeah. Yeah. all those, the Blackwood brothers. I, I say mm -hmm. I know I know them all. <laughs> so you know right? the history as well. Oh yeah, yeah. Oak Ridge boys before mm -hmm. they switched over. I knew them before they switched. Yeah. Uh, Staple singers, yeah, all that man. So. It, and that, to me, you know, to me, that is one of the biggest, uh, that is my, that is my greatest inspiration. That's what keep me going. Not the, not the awards, not the, yeah. not the TV shows and all that stuff. It's the, the, the people that I've had the chance to meet mm -hmm. over the years, sing with, record with the likes of Stevie Wonder, Aretha Franklin, you know, and the list goes on and on with the did concerts with Al Green and oh my God, it's just Luther Vandross, oh my God. So 19, it's 1960, you're, you're down in Smithdale. Did you ever, 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 ever in a million years think you'd play in the White House? No, <laughs> no. I've, I always thought that was a TV adventure. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the TV and watch um, Dolly Parton sing at the White House and, and all the rest of those people. And, but no, not, not in a million years. Um, we, uh, we, had, we were doing some, some dates with Aretha Franklin, my brother and I, mm -hmm. and uh, she, she's been to the White House, I don't know how many times, but she, she called and texted me and said, uh, uh, how would y'all like to sing, be my special guest, no, surprise <laughs> special guest at the White House for the president? And you're like, mm, uh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, do you have to ask me that? Did you have to ask that? <laughs> right. Uh, and she said, well, you know, they don't, you know, Aretha Franklin's old school. She said, well, you know, the White House thinks it's an honor day for you to be there. They're not going to pay a lot of money and all. They're not going to pay no money. I said, Aretha, I, I call her Queen. I said, Queen, just get us there. We doing it. I haven't even talked to Doug. He's going to do it. I'm going to drag him. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm taking that one. And, uh, yeah, she invited us. And, uh, man, the rest is history, man. I, I was just so honored to be, be there. Nobody knew we were coming, mm -hmm. but White House security and the producer of the show. Oh, wow. And I thought that was kind of special. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, but it was, it was a great honor, great honor, man. So what was and the president like? Was he, was he friendly? He was a, he was a friendly guy, man. Yeah. Very, very unique guy, smart guy, man. And uh, we didn't get a chance to take, like, pictures, pictures with him, like all the artists that were, everything yeah. that goes through the White House, they got to know about it. It's got okay. to be in stone, even down to the picture taken. Wow. Yes. Yeah. So we wasn't on the list to take pictures, so we couldn't take pictures. So Aretha, we was in her dressing room. She said, well, don't worry about it. I think he's going to come up on the end of the stage and with us and, and uh, close everything out. I was like, yes, <laughs> yes. And I had a chance to whisper in his ear. This is, this is the amazing moment for me. I had a chance when he was walking around, shaking each other's hand after the show was going off. And I said, thank you, Mr. President, for all you've done for the country. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you. I said, but I said, one thing I just want to tell you is that my mom was 80, I mean, 94 years old before she passed. And she had a chance to vote for you for a black president. 
twice. And he said, oh, wow, that's great. You know, and then yeah. so but they had, they had to keep moving him on. But he really heard because she was looking dead in my eyes. And just to be able to tell him that my mom, you know, voted for him twice because she she had a thing. She said, I never thunk it. You never thunk it. <laughs> I never thunk I would, you know, that I would vote for a black president twice. And she did, man. And that was that was one of the highlights other than being in the White House of my life, man. Yeah. Well, we've got a, we've got a few minutes left. Would you like to sing us a little something? I know your voice has been a little little you, under the weather. You mean but... I've talked my time up all that time? Oh no, we still got a little bit of time. <laughs> we got time. I'm not rushing you now. I'm not, not going to kick you off the stage. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, this is. Let's see. This is. Um, I think this is going to be my new singer. But you know. Um, Talking about preserving tradition of gospel music, I did a Mahaley Jackson song, yeah. How I Got Over, one, oh, of, her, one of her uh, uh, signature songs, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm, I'm doing it. I can't wait to play it on my radio show, too. I have a radio show. You have a radio show, and yeah. you're very active on Facebook. Yeah, Down yeah. Home Gospel with Melvin Williams, man. And Excellent. I mean, it, that's uh, in over 52 markets, and... Um, in the UK and mm -hmm. Africa, and uh, oh man, I'm just grateful for that, man. So, and I'm and it's and I played 90, probably 99 percent traditional gospel music. I go back and get all the Mahalia Jackson's yeah. Caravans, uh, uh, who uh, I'm trying to think of name, Clara War, yeah. and all that you stuff. You truly so are an stadium. ambassador. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep it going for these this young generation. <laughs> I want to bridge that gap. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. I'm trying to think of this song she did. Don't know how my voice is. Okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna blame. It's better than mine. I can tell I'm you that. I'm gonna blame right Marsha for this show. My okay. voice is not right. Here we go. How I got over. Made it over. That's my Haley Jackson. You know my soul. Look back and wonder how I made it over. If I can see Jesus, the one died for me, yeah. Man that bled and suffered, died on Calvary. I want to thank him for how he brought me. I want to thank God for how he taught me. Said I want to thank God how he kept me Ooh, thank him cause he never left me so let's scratch it thank him for old time religion I want to thank God for giving me a vision then I'm gonna join that heavenly choir oh, sing till I never get tired I'm gonna sing Around God altar, I'm gonna shout, travel over my soul. Look back and wonder sometime how I got over. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. incredible Melvin Williams. <laughs> <laughs> Studio audience is going wild. Scratchy voice, man. Scratchy voice. Oh, yeah, but it sounded beautiful. But I love it, man. I love it. Uh, just to go back and do those songs and yeah. uh, just to uh, reminisce and all those artists that, you know, the great Sam Cooke, man, oh, yeah. with the soul stairs. Just uh, it's a blessing, man. I'm grateful, man, and I'm honored, man, just to, that God allowed yeah. me longevity and still here to be able to to do something that I love and 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 you know I don't look at it as a job you right. know I look at it as something that God gave me a gift and blessed me with and, and uh, you're getting to use your talents and I just get to like use my talent man and I just oh man and I just when I think about that man he's like wow dude you know you know it's just uh and and I, I, I I've often just wondered through my career out of all the things that, you know, that we go through in life and the situations mm -hmm. and uh, uh, circumstances, you know, you know, you got teachers, you got preachers, you got doctors, you got lawyers, but singers, uh, entertainers, somebody that can write a song, it just amazed me how much a song mm -hmm. can change a generation when 
talking came, when right. the president came, when the preachers came, yeah. and somebody just sing a song and it just touches your heart and touches the soul. And I, it, that has always amazed me. All, I've always, to this day, and I guess, I guess that's part of the inspiration, is just to sit back and say, like, wow, this dude wrote this song and it's, it's just touching millions of people. I look at Stevie Wonder, I look at Lionel Richie and uh, all those people, man. It's just the writers, man, and just, oh my God, it's unbelievable, man, unbelievable. <laughs> that uh, how a song just touch your heart, man. Well, Melvin, this, this conversation has been unbelievable, too. I thank you for taking the time to come in with us today. The new album is? Where I Started From. Yeah, looking yeah. forward to getting it, so yes. thank you so much. And y'all check out melvinwilliams.net. Uh, uh, you can go to uh, melvinwilliamsentertainment at gmail.com. You can pick it up. It's going to be on the market real soon. Uh, by, by the time this tape come out, this interview yeah. should probably be on the market. <laughs> Buy my record. <laughs> You're, you are not slowing down. Melvin, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me, I man. appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Everything God had in store for me, I claim and I, yes, I do. Everything God had in store for me, claim and I. I've got faith that he will do everything he said he would do. Everything God had in store for me, I claim it now. Awesome. For you. Thank you.